Okay, here I'm going to discuss um, how to tackle this problem number one in the practice exam. Um, so, we have seven charged particles. They have different charges. Um, but all of them are in the xy plane. Charges 1, 7, 3 and 4, they are on the x-axis. And charges 2, 5, 6, they are on the y-axis. Now, we need to find the net force on the charge 7 due to all these other charges. Um, so the approach is we can use uh, Coulomb's law which gives the uh, force between two charged particles. I can write the Coulomb's law. Force on charge number, charge particle 1 due to charge particle 2 equals 1 over 4 phi epsilon naught that is the electrical electric constant times q1 q2 q1 and q2 are the charge of these two charge particles divided by r squared r is the separation between these two charge particles uh, and times r hat r hat is the unique vector in the r direction that is the direction of the force so we can use the coulomb's law to get the force on charge particle 7 due to all other charges all the charges are positive uh, let's mark those charges charge number one is plus 2e 2e uh, charge particle 2 is plus 4e like pro protons there charge particle 3 is e charge particle 4 is 4e charge particle 5 is 2e and charge particle 6 is 8e and charge particle 7 is 6e so those are the charges and all the charges are positive so they repel each other now i'm going to get um, force due to all these charges on the particle 7 and I can see those forces uh, should be either along the x-axis or y-axis. Uh, for example, if you consider particles on the x-axis, force due to charge particle 1 on charge particle 7 is along the positive x-direction. Why? They repel each other. Force due to the charge particle Three on charge particle 7 that should be along uh, negative x direction why again they repel each other similarly uh, the force on the charge particle uh, 7 due to charge particle 4 is again the uh, along the um, negative x axis so all the forces are along the x axis either along the in negative x direction or positive x direction so what i'm going to do is i'm going to write down the all the forces on charge particle 7 along the x axis i'm going to call it fx so this is the x component of the resultant force uh, resultant electrostatic force on charge particle 7 due to all these other charge particles um, i'm going to keep 1 over 4 phi epsilon node that is the electric constant out then i have charge particle one charge particle one and seven the separation between these two charge particles is d d is one centimeter charge of the first charge particle is 2e charge of the seventh charge particle is 6e divided by separation which is d d squared and what is the direction of the force? Direction is along the positive x axis. Now, if you consider charge particle, charge particle 3, the force on the charge particle 7 due to charge particle 3 is along the negative x direction. So, this is going to be negative. And what are the charges? Um, this is 6, 6e. Six e. Um, e 
that is the charge of the third charge particle times 6 e charge of the seventh charge particle divided by their separation d t squared now if you consider charge particle number four the force on the charge particle seven due to charge particle four is along negative x direction so it's again it's going to be negative minus um, 4e charge of the charge particle 4 times 6e charge of the charge particle 7 divided by their separation is now this is the separation that is 2d so 2d squared which is 4 uh, let me let me write in this way um, 2d squared this is 4 times d squared now I can see also um, this is e squared this is e squared and here I have e squared again um, and in the denominator I have d squared d squared and here d squared so e squared divided by d squared is common for all these terms so I'm going to take that out of the um, parenthesis e squared divided by 4 5 epsilon naught d squared then I left with 4 2 times 6 that's 12 minus 1 times 6 that's 6 minus 4 times 6 that's 24 divided by 4 that's 24 divided by 4 that's 6 12 minus 6 that's 6 minus 6 that's 0 so this is this is equals to 0 that implies the fx force or x component of the resultant force equals to 0 now let's consider y components fy now if you consider charge particle uh, charge particle phi um, charge particle phi and charge particle 7 they repel each other the force on the charge particle 7 due to charge particle phi is along the uh, positive y direction so let's write down that force 1 over 4 phi epsilon naught charges are 2e that is the charge of the charge particle phi times 6c charge of the charge particle is d d squared now if you consider charge particle 6 uh, the force on the charge particle 7 due to charge particle 6 is also along the positive y direction plus uh, 8e that is the charge of the charge particle 6 times 6e charge of the charge particle 7 divided by the separation is now d this is the separation this is actually 2d 2d squared now i can consider charge particle 2 uh, the force on the charge particle 7 due to charge particle 2 is along the negative y direction so this is going to be negative minus charge is 4e times charge of the charge particle 7 is 6e and divide by the separation d d squared again i can get this e squared and d squared terms out d squared here this is 4d squared and again d squared so, so e squared divided by d squared times here you have 2 times 6 that's 12 
here you have um, uh, 8 times 6 that's 48 48 divided by 4 that's again uh, 12 12 minus 4 times 6 that's 24 minus 24 12 plus 12 24 minus 24 this is also 0 so that implies the y component of the force is also 0 0 newtons units newtons so if the x and y components of the resultant force is 0 then the net force acting on the particle 7 is 0 if net on particle 7 equals to 0 newtons so there's no direction for the force